Do you want to take your ships from looking like this to this? Well, stay tuned, because I'm going to show you how. What's going on, everybody? I am Grimstone. This is Grimstone Gaming, and today we're playing some Starfield. Now, for those of you that don't already know, Starfield is Bethesda Games' newest IP in the last 25 years, and I gotta say, they did some shit right with this one. Now, Starfield's got a lot of different core mechanics, components, and layers to get through, but one of the coolest things you can do in this game, in my personal opinion, is build your very own custom starship. You can build one from the ground up, or you can grab a ship out in the wild throughout your adventures and turn it into something completely different, now there are those of you that found this mechanic and said oh hell yeah that's for me dove right in and can spend hours inside of that ship customizer but there are also some of you that tinkered with the mechanic for a couple of minutes and then said oh hell no oh hell no oh hell no that being said by the end of this video i'm going to make sure that you walk away with at the very least a much better understanding of all the core mechanics and components in the ship building process we're going to talk about the difference between class A, B, and C ships, the different systems, the different parts. We got a lot of ground to cover, so enough talk, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in New Atlantis. This is the very first major city that you come to in the game after about 45 minutes to an hour of gameplay. You're going to wind up here and you're going to meet this lovely boy, the ship services technician. Now, I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as I can. This is not the only ship services tech that you're going to meet. This is not the only one that exists in the game. This is just the first one that you come to, so we're going to be dealing with him. Uh, do understand that any and every single ship services tech that you come to does offer the same services. Where they differ is their inventory. So this particular ship service tech may have uh, a specific list of ships and parts. While well, you may come across another one on the other side of the galaxy that has a completely different inventory of parts and ships. But they all offer the same services. You can come here, register your ships, buy and sell ships, customize your ships, all that fun stuff. So we're going to get straight into it. We're just going to talk to this guy, Anything jump down to I'd like to modify my ships. Sure. How about it? And that's going to bring you here to the ship overview screen. Now there is a lot of information on this screen. We're going to pay attention primarily to everything on the left-hand side, explicitly the bottom two-thirds of that menu. We're going to get to the ship systems here in just a minute. So on the ship overview, from top to bottom, we've got fuel. That's how much fuel you can carry. That feeds directly into your grav drive distance. Uh, then we've got hull. That's your hull integrity or your hull HP unshielded. So once your shield depletes, that's how many hit points worth of damage your hull can take before you're reloading a safe. Uh, then we've got our cargo, pretty self-explanatory. That's how much cargo you can hold. And then directly beneath that, we have shielded capacity. Now, I'm not going to dive too far off into shielded capacity because it is a bit spoilery. But just know that if you want to engage in certain illicit or pirate activities or do some smuggling, things like that, it would behoove you to have some shielded cargo containers or some shielded cargo capacity on your ship because when you get to a new system and they hit you with that cargo scan, if you have any illicit goods or contraband in your standard cargo or on your person, you're going to get popped. You're going to get thrown in jail. They're going to take your car. They're going to take your illicit cargo. They're going to take your stolen goods and they're going to take a little bit of money from you. It's just a pain in the ass. Better avoid it. So if you want to engage in some of those activities, make sure you've got a little bit of shielded cargo uh, on your ship. That way you can stick your contraband in there. There are particular ship service techs that you've got to go visit in order to find those. We're not going to talk about where, though. We're going to move on down to reactors. Now, you see sitting next to the reactor, I have a big letter C. That dictates this is a Class C ship because it is using a Class C reactor. Uh, if we jump over here to this lovely pleb mobile, everybody starts the game off with the Frontier. You see it's a Class A reactor, much lower tier. Now, the tiering system in this game when it comes to ship parts is a little bit backwards compared to uh, other games that have a tiering or a classification system or a mechanic. 
in most other games, a class A or a tier A is going to be higher than a class B and higher than a class C. In this game, not so much. Class A is going to be the bottom rung of the ladder with class C being top tier kit. So a sidebar on that, keep in mind that while you're building your ship, if the only thing that you can put on your ship is a class A reactor, then the only type of uh, equipment that you can put, the only type of parts that you can use on your ship are class A parts. Uh, same thing goes with class B. If you have a class B, you can put on class A and B. And if you have a class C, you can put on anything you want. Uh, moving on from that, we have our crew count. That's how many NPC crew members that we can have on board the ship. That does not include yourself. So in this case, I can have eight crewmen plus myself. That's nine in total. Down from that, we have jump distance. That is how far you can grab a jump. I can jump 28 light years in this circumstance. Next to that, you have your shield HP. That's how many HP uh, your shield carries. It does regenerate over time as long as you stay out of a firefight. Uh, and then underneath that, we have three abbreviated words. We've got PAR, BAL, and MSL. Those stand for, respectively, in this particular build, my particle weapon, ballistics weapon, and missile weapons. Underneath that, those three numbers represent the DPS that each one of those particular weapon systems can do. So, respectively, my particle, ballistics, and mi missile weapons can do 83, 294, and 871 DPS. Under that, you're going to see the word registered. Again, as I said before, some activities you partake in in this game might warrant you acquire a ship that is not registered to you. Uh, if you do not have a ship registered to you, you cannot sell it, you cannot alter it, you can't upgrade it, you can't do anything to it until you registered it to yourself. Uh, that just costs some credits. Beneath that, you're going to see the value and mass. Obviously, the value, that's how much the ship is worth if I were to sell it, and the mass is how much it weighs. So going from there we're going to jump up here to the very top just under ship systems okay you're going to see my particle ship system ballistic ship system missile ship system and we're going to look at those three first so those are all three of your weapon types now there are more weapon types uh, there's actually a uh, a laser weapon that shows up as either laz or lzr i can't quite remember if i'm not mistaken the frontier yeah las so LAS is going to be laser style weapons if that's what you're using in this particular situation. I'm using particle beams uh, because it's just personal preference. So if you look down underneath the blue bar that says PBO 300 auto alpha beam, you're gonna see the breakdown of all of those weapons. If you look over there to the right, you're gonna see that there's four weapons highlighted in blue on my ship. Those are my particle weapons. They are class C weapons. They have a range of 3,000 meters. You know, range is exactly what you think it is. That's how far away you can be before you can actually hit the enemy. A fire rate of four. Hull damage and shield damage in this case are the same. Hull damage and shield damage are both 20.89. Your laser weapons and your particle weapons excel more in the area of dealing direct shield damage than they do in hull damage. Uh, the shield damage of these weapons is actually somewhat low but again it was personal preference they fit the aesthetic of my build a little bit better than some of the other weapons max power this is important the max power of each one of these individual systems is how many of those individual bars you have to fill up before that particular system is considered powered all the way up so uh, it's going to take a lot longer for this particular weapon to recharge if I only allocate four notches of power to that particular weapon system as it would if I were to go ahead and max it out and put all 12 notches in there. Uh, the whole number is how many HP are dedicated to the ship as a whole. That's its contribution to the ship as a whole uh, for its overall HP. And then the crew capacity, honestly, you can just ignore that. Um, you do not have to have a particular number of crewmates on board your ship just to man the weapons. You can actually man them completely independently. Okay, moving on from that, you have the ballistic weapons. Again, you see they highlight over there on the right-hand side. I've got uh, the two up top and then the one down here on the bottom. 
uh, ballistics are going to read the exact same way. So they're Class C weapons, range of 800, a fire rate of 1.5, so they're very slow firing. The one big difference you're going to see with the ballistics weapons is look at the hull versus shield damage, okay? Your ballistics weapons excel in ripping the hull of the enemy ship apart, not so much the shield, okay? So just remember that, you know, particle and laser weapons, those are for shields. Anything that's energy-based, those are going to rip through enemy shields. And then you have your ballistics. Uh, those are going to rip through enemy hull. Uh, again, max power the same. 12 notches of allocation to get it max powered. 18 is uh, its contribution to the overall HP. And then the crew capacity. Again, you can ignore that. And then we have the missile weapons. More of the same. Again, Class C weapons, a range of 4,000. So it's actually my farthest firing weapon. Fire rate of 1, so they're quite slow. But look at the hole in shield damage, okay? These are big boys, and they hurt, okay? 290.39 DPS versus both the hull and the shield. But you are sacrificing quite a good bit of fire rate. And the missiles do not do their job until you have gotten a full lock onto your enemy. If you've done any amount of space fighting, you have noticed that uh, once you start locking onto an enemy, it takes a few seconds uh, before it becomes fully locked on, and only when it's fully locked on uh, can you guarantee that you're actually going to hit your target unless they're just sitting still after you've done something like knocked out their engines. Uh, hull, same thing as before, crew capacity. Again, you can ignore that. All right, moving on from that, we go to our engines. Again, highlighted over there on the right. These are Class B engines. They are Class B and not Class E, strictly because of personal preference. Um, aesthetically speaking, I like the way these engines looked better in this build. You'll realize when you start tinkering more with the shipbuilding mechanic that what the particular part brings to the build does matter quite a bit, but so does how you want it to look. So just because it's the best of the best doesn't mean it has to go on your ship. As a matter of fact, if you cobble together all the best parts into one amalgamation, you may not like what you get. So personal preference does play a huge role in shipbuilding. I just like the way this particular engine looks in this build. Max power, same, 12 allocated uh, spots to get it max powered. Engine thrust, that is the forward momentum generated by those engines. That number is accumulative. So that is not 29,560 per engine. That's 29,560 from all four at the same time. Maneuvering thrust, same thing. It is accumulative. 6320 generated by all four simultaneously. Your maneuvering thrust feeds directly into that little white sub bar by your throttle bar. When you maintain a throttle position inside that little white sub bar, it is much easier for you to turn, bank, reacquire your target, things like that. The higher that maneuvering thrust number is, the easier and the better uh, it's going to be for you to turn get your target back in front of you, things like that. Uh, engine health, again, that number is also accumulative, so it is not 480 uh, health per engine, it's 480 from all four, so 122 apiece. That is your uh, engine HP. Your engines can be knocked out individually in a firefight. Jumping from there, we go over to shield. Now you are only allowed, as you can see up there at the back of my build, one shield generator per ship. This is a class C. Again, 12 allocated notches gets it to max power. Shield max health is 1600. So when it's got all 12 of those notches, it's gonna have 1600. If I only put in say 10 notches, it's gonna be down around 1250. Regen rate, that's pretty self-explanatory. That is how fast your shields regenerate in between encounters. So the higher that number, the quicker you're gonna get your shields back. And last but not least, we're gonna jump over to grab drives. Uh, again, you're only allowed one grab drive per ship. This is a class C. Max power on this one's only 11, so I've only got to allocate 11 notches to this in order to get it up to max. Grab jump thrust, that is how much thrust is offered up to distance in a grab jump. So the higher that number, the farther that you can jump as long as you have the fuel. Uh, grab drive health, again, 147 hit points for that particular piece of kit. It can be knocked out independently of any other system. All right, now that covers all of the ship systems available here in the ship overview menu, but there is one more 
uh, ship system that we have to cover. It's the most important. So we're going to go here to upgrade ship. We're going to tap all the way over. And you're going to see there at the back, that is the reactor that's been highlighted. Now, your reactor, as I mentioned, is what dictates what class of ship you have. Class C, Class B, Class A. So this is a Class C reactor. Power generated. This is the important number. Power generated is how many notches you have to be able to give to each one of your individual ship systems. So power generated 34. I have 34 notches that I can give to any individual system or that I can spread out across all of them. Repair rate, that is how fast your, your ship can repair itself. It can repair the hull when you have suffered hull damage using your ship parts. Now, please keep in mind that is strictly for the hull. That is not for your shield. Your shield will regenerate on its own as long as you have 100% hull integrity. Reactor health and hull. Again, same thing. That is the hit. Uh, that is the hit points associated with the reactor. If your reactor gets taken out, that's it's game over. You're reloading a save. All right. So with all the basics covered, let's build us a ship. So we're going to back out of that. Now, there is a quick disclaimer here. At the time of recording this, I play on PC. There is a known bug where if you look down there at the bottom, if you're using a dedicated Xbox controller or gamepad, you'll notice that the ship builder and the upgrade ship uh, options are tethered to the exact same button. They're bound to the same button. There's no way to fix that. There's no way to unbind it if you're using a keypad. It's not like this on Xbox. Um, but you, you just, you can't get away from that on PC, but there is a workaround. If you still have access to your keyboard and mouse while you're in the middle of gameplay, just simply tap anywhere on the screen and suddenly you'll see that your options have switched to ship builder is now bound to the B key upgrade ship bound to the E key. So all you do is tap B, boom, you're in the ship builder, go back to using your controller and all as well. Now. When it comes down to keyboard and mouse, I am relatively ignorant to what the keys are inside of the ship builder. So for you PC fanatics out there that know a lot more than I do when it comes to keyboard and mouse play, leave some comments down below and let me know what some of the keys do inside of the ship builder so that I know for future future reference and for future videos. Uh, as far as gamepad and dedicated Xbox controller, it's actually pretty simple. So your left and right triggers zoom in and zoom out. Left trigger zooms out, right trigger zooms in. Uh, the left thumbstick pans the camera left and right, forward and backward. Your right control stick rotates left and right, up and down. And then if you want to go up and down on the vertical plane, it is up or down on the D-pad. Now, the rest of the controls are relatively easy once you start looking at them. Uh, you have an undo and a redo button bound to left and right on your d-pad You can change the color of most ship parts by clicking the left control stick You can select everything in a cluster, which is everything attached to a specific point in this case It's the entire ship by clicking the left bumper now That's going to come in really handy later on if you have certain pieces like let's say I had these two cluster pieces together like this, well, let's say I didn't want to move them independently. You can just click select all, grab the whole thing, and move it around just like so. Then you have your delete key, so you can pick a particular piece and just delete it outright. And then if you didn't want to do that, you can hit the undo button. You can edit a piece, which just means grab it by pressing the A button. And then while you're holding on to something that is available at the vendor you are currently at. So while, while you're at different technicians, they may have different stuff. So for instance, this, uh, this particular technician does not sell this cockpit. Okay, it is nowhere. You come over here and you hit add. It's going to take you to all the different stuff. These are the cockpits that this vendor sells. Okay, he does not sell this cockpit. He does, however, sell this particular um, helium tank. Now, you can tell that pretty quickly by looking down there in the bottom, and you'll notice there's a duplicate button now. So if I don't want to go over here and go find fuel tanks and then go looking for that particular tank, I can just come right here and duplicate it. Then I can add it. I can put it wherever I want to put it, do whatever. Uh, your flight check, we're going to get more into that here in just a second. Uh, that's actually probably one of the most important tools that you can have while building a ship. And then, of course, B button gets you out of the entire, gets you out of everything, exits. 
So for the sake of this video, we're just going to make something nice and simple. We're going to start with a clean slate. So we're going to delete absolutely everything. Now, here's where we take a look at the flight check. As you're building your ship and you're tinkering, keep an eye over there at your error bar. There's gonna, it's going to show errors, it's going to show warnings, and then if it doesn't show anything, then you're nominal. So if you want to see what the errors are, just click the menu button and take a look. So now it says stuff like missing cockpit, um, missing the grab drive, missing reactor. We don't have anything, so it's got errors all over the place. All right, so starting off, we're going to jump straight in with the HABs. Now, HABs make up the bulk portion of the body of your ship. So, while we're here, we're going to start off, we're going to, we're going to keep it simple. Uh, we're going to start off with the Demos. Now, if you look at most of these pieces, you're going to see uh, different bars at the bottom. Those are the variations, the different variants of those particular pieces. So, for instance, we're going to take this Demos all-in-one berth 3x1. Three by, uh, three by so, this is the all-in-one. Okay, it means exactly how it sounds. There's a little bit of everything inside this hab. Or you can do the engineering bay. There's an engineering bay A and an engineering bay B. It changes the interior just a little bit. I'm not going to do too much of a deep dive into what all of the different variations are. If I did, this video would be three hours long and I would be hacking my way through it. So, uh, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to kind of do some experimentation and some trial and error and see what each one of these different bay or each one of these different habs do. Uh, they all do serve different purposes. Most of them are pretty simple, though. For instance, this one, you know, Demos Living Quarters 3x1. This is the largest living quarters for the NPCs or for uh, NPCs available at this uh, particular merchant. So that's what we're going to start off with. Okay, then we're going to jump over here. So this is the Demos Workshop. It's going to have your crafting bays in it. I'm going to pop that down there. And then we're going to go up here and grab a companion way. And that's going to finish it. That's going to polish off the uh, basically the main trunk of the build. Now, you're going to see as I pan around these things, there's a whole bunch of different little uh, blue spots like this one right here. Those are all your connection points. Those are all your attachment points. So I can pick this piece up and I can put it here, I can move it over here, I can put it back here, I can put it up on top. Uh, those attachment points are exactly how they look. Now, just because something has attachment points does not mean that something, that particular things can attach to it. For example, you see that this one has attachment points on the side, just like this one has attachment points on the top. But we're going to go over here to cockpits and we're just going to pick this first cockpit. Notice, I can only put the cockpit in one place, and that is right here in the front, okay? So we're going to pop that down, and the reason it's like that is because obviously if we tried to put a cockpit over here on the side facing outwards, it would just look kind of strange. We're going to put that down. Next, we're going to move to bays, which is your landing bays. Okay, we're just going to go with the first one we see. Grab it, flip it around. And I want that one down here. So that's going to lift the whole thing up above the operating plane. And that's because this is going to be in contact with the ground. The landing bay door is going to be in contact with the ground. So imagine that this blue dotted and striped, or blue dotted and lined plane is going to be the ground. This is where the flat uh, flat points are going to hit. That's the contact points. So we're going to go from here. And we're going to jump over to gear. This is your landing gear. So we're going to flip that around. Grab that. Put one here, here. Put one here. And one here. Now, keep this in mind about your landing gear. Actually, we need to move those up so that they're contacting the ground. Now keep this in mind about your landing gear. The bigger you make your ship and the more mass your ship has, the more landing gear your ship must have. So for instance, the Asmodeus, my home ship, it has 14 sets of landing gear. So just keep that in mind as you're starting to build these big massive flying fortresses. Uh, the bigger the body, the more feet it needs. So we've got our landing gear, our body, our, our cockpit, we have our... Uh, landing where we have our bay we're going to jump over here to engines 
And we're gonna do... We're just gonna do... Kind of a middle of the road one. Pop that back here on the back. We're gonna put that there. And I left that gap on purpose because that gap is where we're gonna put our reactor. And for the sake of this, we're gonna pick a pretty good... We're not gonna pick the best, but we're not gonna pick the worst reactor. We're gonna pick the six, uh, 164. We're gonna pop that down right in the middle. We've got our reactor. Now we need our grab drive. And for this, we're gonna get, uh, we're just gonna grab this Helios 300. And we're gonna pop that grab drive down right there. And then we need fuel tanks. So we're going to get, let's see. I'm going to use this one because it's got plenty of attachment points. We're going to put that right there. Okay, so as you can see, we are down to only two errors. So if we take a look at those errors, you're going to see that we're missing a docker and you cannot reach the cockpit from the landing bay. That is a really, really, really important thing to see. So what that means is there is no way to get from this landing bay here to the cockpit. So that means you either need to change the position of your cockpit or you need to change the landing bay. So we're going to take that down. Did that fix the error? Nope. Put that back up. Move this out to the side. We're going to reattach these. So we're going to take this one, flip it, and we're going to put it... down here instead. Take this, put that down, put that down, put that down, and put that down. Now, you can see that you can get to the cockpit. Because this particular landing bay's entry point is here, on the top. You have to climb up. So, now that's changed, we're going to select this whole bundle. And to clean that up, we're just going to put that right there. Alright, what else do we need? Alright, so we're missing a docker. We don't have a shield. We have low mobility, okay, because we're heavy and we don't have enough engines. We're missing three weapon assignments. We'll get to the weapon assignments last. So now, we're going to take that and we're going to duplicate this engine. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to find an engine that has a side mount. There we go. It's still a class A. Then we're going to duplicate this, flip it around, put it there. Now we're down to one air. Okay. Now the docker, that is, it's pretty simple what the docker does. So in order for you to dock with another space station or something of that nature, you have to have a docker. Uh, the easiest place to put one, we're actually going to put this one on the bottom. So we're going to grab another hab. We're going to do a... We'll put a captain's quarter down here at the bottom of the ship. Pop that right there. We're going to come underneath. Now here's your dockers. Now we're gonna do a slim docker. Oh, we're gonna take that, flip it, and we're gonna pop it on the bottom. Now that's where we can dock with space stations. So you see, now we have completely run out of errors and now we just have warnings. So the warnings are we're missing a shield, we're missing three weapon assignments, and that is it. So. We're going to jump over here to shields, and we're just going to find you know, something decent. We'll grab that. We're going to pop it down right here. Actually, we're going to pop this down right there. Now, to mount your weapons, you can do a couple of different things. You see there's attachment points all over here. So you can either jump over here to weapons. Uh, we're going to take an auto cannon, 
And you see the attachment points on the side went away. It's like I said earlier, just because there's an attachment point when you put it down doesn't mean you can attach anything to it. So the way that you get around that, come over here and you go to structural. Now, all of these things are either cosmetic or they have some type of uh, structural significance, things like that. Like you can go down here, they have the Demos Bracers. These are so you can maybe push an engine away from uh, the ship itself. Like if I didn't like the fact that I had these sitting right next to the fuel tanks, I could pop this down here. Ship, or pop the thruster there. You can do that. So we're going to go back in here to structural. And you're looking... Where are you? Four hours later. Or something like this. You have weapon mounts. Okay. So you can take this weapon mount and it'll attach directly to any forward facing uh, mount point. So now I can take this and let's say I want to put that auto turret there. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to put one there. Put one there. So I've got those three. Now, you see that we have unassigned weapons, okay? A lot of people get driven mad by this. So, if you hit the right bumper, or just click over to the next tab up here at the top, you're going to see weapon 0, weapon 1, and weapon 2, okay? So, if you just tap A, you're going to see that those KE-31A autocannons that I just put in become available. So now... If you look over there on the top left of the screen, you're going to see that I have weapon zero, and now it has its own allocation. So that's how you fix that. Now we're sitting at low mobility, reduce mass, add engines. Okay, so the ship's getting bigger. It needs more engine thrust. So for the sake of this, we're just going to get rid of those, put those back. Does that fix the issue? Nope, still low mobility. So we're going to delete these. We're going to go back over to engines and we're going to find some better engines. All right, so we're going to use this White Dwarf 2000. Take that, pop it there, duplicate it, flip it around, pop it there. And now we still have low mobility. Is that so? All right. Bet you we have enough thrust now. All right, so now we're just missing two weapon assignments. What that means is. So if you have an error, you cannot use the ship. You cannot exit the flight deck, the flight check. But if you have warnings, you can. So if you have a low mobility warning, you can, in fact, still use the ship. If you have a ship that doesn't have a shield, you can, in fact, leave because it is not a mandatory part of the ship itself. It's not something you must have. So right now, we are actually good while still missing two weapon assignments. But just to finish this out, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab we're gonna grab some of these lasers. Grab a missile launcher. Put that there. We're actually going to get rid of that. Put a missile launcher there. And we're gonna put that there. Okay. So now we have three different types of weapons. Now you notice there's an error. Unassigned weapons. So go back over here. We're going to assign the laser to that. We're going to assign the missile launcher to that. And you see down there, we are nominal. What that means is... I can fly. You go to your flight check, confirm, and boom. You now have a ship. Make this my home ship. And isn't she a beaut? Meh. <laughs> and the rest of it is just left up to your imagination. Well, there you have it, boys and girls. Listen, if you stuck around to the end of the video with me, I gotta say huge love, respect, and thanks to every single one of y'all. For those of y'all that do not know, this is actually my very first YouTube upload ever. And I'm not gonna lie, hitting that button for the first time, scary as shit, but I'm glad I did it. Um, I gotta say a huge thanks and shout out especially to Scott Benoit, Chris Tenney, my first Patreons, my buddies, my brothers, 
Uh, without them, I would have never had the balls or the know-how to even start this or hit that button to upload this video in the first place. Same thing goes for my boy Enra Silver, whose YouTube is actually linked down below in the description. Go check him out. Big time No Man's Sky streamer. Also streams some Starfield from time to time. Super chill, super laid back, super awesome, and gave me a lot of the, uh, basically the musings that I needed to start this channel. And while you're at it, passing around the love, Throw some love back my way, shoot me a like, shoot me a couple of comments, leave me some critique, let me know how I did, let me know how I can improve and how I can get better. Uh, if you want to be super awesome, you can even hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can check out all my new content as soon as it drops. And if you want to be really badass, you can become a gremlin by checking out my Patreon link in the description below. Down there, you're also going to find a link to all my social medias. You can catch me just about anywhere at the Grim Gamer. I follow all gamers back, so catch me out there. And with that, y'all stay great, stay gamers, stay grim.